Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Max and Ben Talk Hockey. And today, Max and I interviewed forward Sean Frell, who currently plays on the Chicago Steel of the USHL and was a fourth round pick of the Montreal Canadiens in 2020. Please like and subscribe to the video and hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so my first question is, where did you grow up and how did the people that grew up uh, around you uh, help convince you to play hockey? And also, what was your favorite NHL team growing up? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in Hopkins in Massachusetts. Uh, my parents never played hockey growing up, but um, a bunch of my cousins did. So uh, when I was younger, uh, they were the ones who, who got me into it. My grandma lives on a lake in Massachusetts. So um, I started skating by um, going over there and, and my cousins put me in their old skates. And that's kind of how I started out. And then obviously being from Massachusetts growing up, I was a big Bruins fan. Um, so I've liked them pretty much all my life, um, and, and enjoy watching them play. I think like watching like Marshawn and Bergeron over like the period of my life has been really fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually a Rangers fan and, yeah. uh, Max, um, we were a fan of. I'm a diehard, I'm a, like a diehard Bruins fan. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. How long have you been a fan of the Bruins? Yeah. Uh, 2012, right after winning the cup. Oh, God. Nice. Yeah. I've been a Rangers fan since, I don't know, when I remember watching hockey. Yeah. Uh, just my dad and my grandfather were just giant Rangers fans. So, uh -huh. so they just told me, this is the New York Rangers. This is your favorite team. Stanley Cups every single year. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. That's basically how it started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, you've won a few different numbers, like 21 and 19. Uh, if you, going into next season, if you could pick a number, what number would you pick? And do you have any special meaning behind your numbers? Um, the, the number that I usually wear is 21. Um, so I think for me this year, I, I was supposed to be at Harvard, but obviously with um, everything that's going on right now, um, the season was canceled there. Um, so I, I, I'm going to be number 21 in college, um, but this year in Chicago, uh, I'm going to be number 26 because um, I kind of got there a little late and they had all the numbers picked out already. So, I mean, I'm not too picky about about which number I wear. I kind of just got 21 when I was a kid and stuck with it all the way up through now. Yeah, I, I've always been um, 30 just because of Henrik Lundqvist. Oh, yeah, your goalie? Yeah, we're both goalies. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Max has been 40 like, all his life, basically. We used to be on the same team. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and while, Best goalie duel. Yeah, definitely. Best goalie duel. Or duel, yeah. Uh, and while playing for the Boston Junior Bruins, uh, what was the greatest skill that you learned uh, that helped you to get to where you are today? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think – Playing with the junior Bruins, uh, I played with them growing up when I was when I was pretty young, like during like summer tournaments um, and stuff like that. And it, it was always cool to like play with a bunch of kids um, from the same area as me that were also like really good players um, that I'd usually like play against during like the winter seasons. So uh, it was it was great to play with like some of those kids more in the summer. And then also like I played. Uh, like my eighth grade year, I played the full year with like the U16 junior Bruins. And um, as like a younger player um, on that team, is is a great experience for me um, to like challenge myself uh, against some older players and, and learn a lot. My coach, Topher Beavis there was, was awesome. And um, I had a really fun year there with the group of guys we had. That's cool. Uh, which, which team did you play in uh, for the winners? What was that? Sorry. Uh, which team did you play with uh, during the winners? Oh, the winner. I played for the Minuteman Flames. Oh yeah, I've heard of them. They're they're supposed to be really good. Yeah, yeah. We had a we had a pretty good team growing up. Um, and then like around, I played with the Flames for like seven or eight years, and then um, around like my eighth grade year, ninth grade year, everyone kind of like split up and and went off to did different schools or different teams or whatnot. Uh, and that's when I played that full season with the Junior Browns. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, my next question is, what was it like uh, representing the Chicago Steel as an assistant captain last year? Um, I actually didn't last year. Um, I'm going to be an assistant captain this year. Um, so I think um. – like, <laughs> You're good. Uh, so, like, I think last year, like, we, we had a great group of leaders, um, one of them being John Spatz, who was my roommate last year. Um, and I think – uh, this year, like we we have another great group, um, which which I'm a part of. Um, like our our head captain Eric Mittendorf is is a great guy and and a great person to have in the locker room. And I think overall, like the the five of us that were chosen, are, we'll just like try our best to to set a good example and and help lead some of the younger guys on our team. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like. I personally can't be a captain, and I our team doesn't do captains. Yeah, but like there there are a bunch of us who like are basically the makeshift captains, although we just like don't get a C on our jerseys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think they're they're they have way more years than the five. Years than the five. Yeah. That have the five so. Yeah. Um. And how is the transition from AAA hockey to high school hockey, and from that to the USNDP? I was my U16 year going into high school. Um, so I think playing up at U16 the, the year before I went into high school helped me a ton. Um, being able to step in to, to play at, at the prep school St. Mark's um, right away and, and be someone who could help my team and make a pretty big impact right away. And then after that, like my sophomore year going into the NTDP, um, that was a pretty big jump like playing in the USHL um, as a 15 year old is, is tough. Like all those kids are so fast and big uh, when you're, when you're um, coming into the league as, as a player that young. So it definitely takes a little bit to, to figure it out and it takes a while to like find confidence in your game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It must've been tough. Cause like the USHL, they can go up to like what? Uh, 1920. Yeah. 1920. You, 20s, oh. I think. Yeah, it's like a five year difference. That's a lot. Yeah. 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 Um, how did it feel how did it feel to be the USHL uh in twenty nineteen twenty season? Uh yeah, I think for me last year I, I didn't really pay attention to that too much. I just kinda went out and, and tried to make plays. I think being a playmaker is like my, my greatest asset. So um lucky enough to play with like a, a lot of good players who could who could finish so all i really had to do was was get them the puck and the assist just started to pile up last year yeah it's yeah it's really cool uh yeah like there there aren't that many forwards who could say that uh they have like more like almost as many assists as games played yeah yeah like that, that's usually like for the defenders or for like like wayne gretzky or <laughs> Nikita Kucherov that one season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and why did you decide to go from the USNDP to the Chicago Steel? And what was your first game with the Steel like? Um, so that year after the NTDP, um, the, the, I, I kind of talked to the Steel beforehand. Um, Coach uh, Greg Moore was, was there with the Steel. Um, that year and he coached me my U17 year at, at the NTDP so I had a pretty good relationship with him so I think um, getting to the steel was was great for me and I knew it'd be a really good opportunity for um, myself just because it's it's such a great program and, and there are so many great coaches and players um, so I think coming coming into my first game with the steel um, I was pretty comfortable already um, just being in the league for that long. And then um, our team kind of gelled right away um, when I first got there. So we all felt pretty comfortable going in our first game. And, and we kind of like took that throughout the whole season. Yeah, I saw your record. That's like, that's like really good. Yeah. You went like, what, 41 and seven, something like that? Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, that's like... But you ran away with the league, basically. Yeah, and we were, we were like playing our best right at the end when it got canceled, which is too bad. Uh, it was fun to 
going to playoffs. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing this off season to pr- help your help your help you prepare for the upcoming season at Harvard? Um. So for me, uh, this off season, once I was able to like get in the gym and get on the ice after after the lockdown and quarantine and such, um, it was just about like in the gym trying trying to get stronger and faster, and then on the ice and been, been working a bunch on my shot, like finding different ways to score goals, like one timers and quick releases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for my high school, I joined my crew team. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a great sport just because like, you're basically, you need like the endurance of a marathon runner, but like you also need the strength of a power lifter. And yeah. it's eight of you to try to like get a boat to go at like 15 miles an hour. And it's like, it's great exercise. So that that's definitely helped me prepare for hockey. Yeah, rowing's definitely pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, and Max and I actually interviewed your teammate, uh, Matt Coronado. And how is it like playing with him on the steel? Uh, yeah, I love playing with him, I think. He's he's a really good player. Um, he's fast. He can make plays and, and can finish as well. So... Um, it's been a lot of fun playing with him, and he, he's such a great guy to have in the locker room. Um, and he'll be at Harvard too, which which will be fun for the next uh, few years. Yeah, he 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 was a uh, he was a really uh, nice guy to interview. Yeah, yeah. actually, we actually you uh, he, he played on a youth team that I play against, or Max and I both play against. Which one? Uh, NJ Colonials. Oh yeah, yeah. I played them growing up a bunch. Yeah, we play. We play them. I mean, we're not AAA, but uh, we still play them just because they're sometimes in our league. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, his video is actually like blowing up. It's crazy. We I mean, really? get plenty of views from his video. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you could meet and talk to one one NHL player, uh, who would you choose, and what would you talk to them about? Um. I think I'd probably say Sidney Crosby. Um, I think, like, arguably he's he's been the best player in the NHL for probably, like, over 10 years now. So um, I think the, the way he sees a game and, like, the way he's able to use his body is is really special to watch. And he, he seems to add things to his game, like, as he gets older. Um, so... I think it'd be really cool cool to talk to him about hockey and like kind of like what he does to prepare and like get better every off season. Yeah, I mean, now I think like the sun is setting on Crosby and the Penguins, just like yeah. my hot take. But uh, yeah, he was special for like a really long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and how did it feel to score fifty six points in forty four games, including forty one assists? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty good. I think like last year we were on a really good team with a lot of good players, so uh, we put up a lot of a lot of goals and and points collectively. So I think when you when you're on a team that's that's rolling and is able to play like four lines deep with with talent on every line and really good defensemen, it's, it's pretty easy and like points just kind of come with that. Yeah, I mean it's kind of the same with like my team where we, we're like we're uh, five and zero and we have three shutouts in those five games. Yeah, and it's just like we mostly focus on our defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we have kids who should be playing at a higher level. Yeah. Uh, than what we are uh, on our third pair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but like also our offense, like we're just like stacked and like basically like even even our fourth line, like I'm not concerned that like. As a goalie, I'm not concerned that we're, I'm going to have a rough time. Yeah. So I'll know that they'll do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, I guess, like, that. that's kind of what happened. Just, like, when your team's so deep, like, like for, for you, it's, like, the, with the steel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What is the importance of being a disciplined, uh, of being a disciplined player playing in leagues like um, the USDP? and the USHL and how does it help your team? Um, yeah, I think, I think it's pretty important just to, 
to be someone that like your coach can rely on in, in all situations. Um, I think like at every level coaches are, are looking for like smart, smart players who, who know that they'll, they'll get the job done when they go out there. So, um, for us, like we always talk about like being disciplined in, in our D zone, um, in order to, to play offense. So like, we all know that that defense comes first. And if, if we want to play, like we got to be good in our own end, uh, to create offense for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like the same with my team. Uh, and honestly, for me, like I'm a pretty disciplined playing goalie. I have like one penalty. Yeah. In my like six years of playing that mm -hmm. happened last year in Montreal. Uh, yeah. How'd you do that? Oh, uh, I called a ref high. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, there was a goal that was scored that like shouldn't have been scored because I had the puck frozen. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just got mad. <laughs> My coach was mad. Pretty sure Ben and I are the Ben and I are the complete opposite in that. I'm the, I'm completely undisciplined. I definitely need to work on it, but uh, I'm very emotional in my games. If I have something I don't like, I'll take action. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. My my parents actually didn't really mind. I mean, my my mom was there, but she didn't really know what what was going on. Yeah. Uh, my my dad gave me a fist bump. It's like you earned that one. Uh, <laughs> my brother's like, good job. Uh, my coach was mad. That was yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Um, and when did you realize that you had a chance of being drafted in the 2020 NHL draft? Um, yeah, I think like being drafted is, was always like a goal of mine. Um, growing up playing hockey, I think that's everyone, every hockey player's kind of dream or goal. Um, so I think probably like when I was at the NTDP, um, my second year, uh, we had a bunch of players who were like up for the draft, and and most of them actually like got drafted. A lot of them pretty high. Um, so I think going into my season with the steal, um, I knew if I had a good season, then I could be in that position as well. So um, I think like over the year, I played pretty well and and knew I'd be in a position to to get picked. So so that was pretty special for me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, is there any type of specific music that to listen to before games, like any pregame music uh, you have? Not really. Like we just we we have the big speaker in our locker room, so wh whoever's on the the speaker gets to choose. We usually go with rap, though. Nothing specific. We mix it up every game. Yeah, I I usually listen to like rapper. Uh, like rock or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing like mellow or anything like that. Then I know they have a bad game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and how did it feel to go to the Montreal Canadiens at 124th overall? And how excited are you to be in such a historic organization? Yeah, I was I was really excited to be, to be drafted by the Canadians. I think, like you said, it's it's one of the original six franchises, and like. Obviously, like people in Montreal love hockey, so one day it it'd be like an amazing place to play. Um, so I think for me, like getting drafted into an organization that that is in such a great location, has such a great fan base and an organization throughout, um, is really awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, it's really cool. And like, especially like you're born like the greater Boston area, and yet you were drafted yeah. by the Canadians. Yeah. Yeah, which like the, the the first time I saw that uh, on the Leap Prospects, I laughed. <laughs> was it? It was actually ironic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are many great young um, prospects and player uh, playmakers in the Canadians organization. But who are you most excited to learn from? Um, I think like watching the Canadians. Uh, I, I think over the years, I've liked to watch Brendan Gallagher. Um, if I had to pick one guy out from from their team, um, he's he's on the smaller side like me, but um, he competes so hard and and always seems to to create havoc for the other team and, and make a ton of plays for the Canadians. Yeah, yeah, he's he he's been doing really well this season. Yeah, 
yeah, he 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 went off. I think like he, like it was like one of I, th- I think it was like his best season so far. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, and and like the Canadians have like so many like young guys, uh, Charlie Lindgren, Cole Caulfield's coming up through the program eventually. Uh, yeah. Suzuki, Nick Suzuki. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and a bunch of other guys. Like they're just like. They're, they're going to get good real fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that was my last question. Uh, Max, do you have any more questions? No, that was all mine. Uh, all right. Uh, well, thank you so much for the interview, uh, Sean. This was great. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Uh, uh, good luck with your season. You as well. Can you hear me or no? Yeah, 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 we can. All right. No, thank, thank you for uh, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Of course. Yeah.